My brothers and sisters in Christ, I welcome you as we continue on our journey through Lent. I found out this morning as someone asked the question, what does Lent actually mean? And it's the translation from the Latin word 40, is which we have these 40 days where we journey with our Lord and through as very practices that we try to adopt, we try to emulate that call to discipleship that ultimately we are called to live the faith that we proclaim. Our service will continue on page 355 of the prayer book and we are told in today's gospel, unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. We pray together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Collet for the Annunciation of our Lord to the Blessed Virgin. Grace into our hearts, O Lord, that we who have known in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the ministry of the word. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus 3. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw he had turned aside to see God, called to him out of the bush. Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, come close, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites the Hittites, the Amorites, 
the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites was now, has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that he is. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors, ancestors has sent me to you and they ask me what is his name what shall I say to them God said to Moses I am who I am he said further thus you shall say to the Israelites I am has sent me to you God also said to Moses thus you shall say to the Israelites the Lord God of your ancestors the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read together Psalm 63, found in your bulletins. O oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the Nile watches, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters, as some of them did, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did, and they were destroyed by serpents. And do not complain as some of them did, and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example, and they were written down to instruct us, on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, Watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide the way out, so that you may be able to endure it.
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we prepare to receive the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, we will be led in by the gradual hymn, Oh, how he loves you and me. Please stand. The Lord be with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans who, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came along looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I've come looking for fruit from on this fig tree and I've still found none. Cut it down. Why should I be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of the Lord. Unless you repent, you will all perish, just as they did. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. Please be seated.
Last week, we got the air ducts in the church cleaned. And not just cleaned, but Stanley steamered so you can be assured that it was done well. But Lent, these 40 days, serves as a similar process. It is supposed to be the spring cleaning of our souls. And in today's gospel, our Lord Jesus Christ isn't gently nudging us, but rather trying to shake us out of our spiritual slumber. In today's gospel, the parable of the fig tree signals that judgment is coming. But we are assured that there is a divine gardener who is patiently nurturing us towards bearing spiritual fruit. However, we need to qualify as we read this parable the fact that while it is reasonable to equate God the Father with the owner of the vineyard in the parable, in contradistinction to the Old Testament narratives that portray an angry, judgmental God. We know the New Testament, the good news, conveys a message of the father who is like that looking out for the prodigal son or the lost sheep or the lost coin, which underscores a merciful, merciful God who seeks to gather the lost and the scattered. While it is customary for us to consider the old rugged cross as a symbol of atonement through Christ, it was not done to placate a vindictive father. But as we are told in John 3.16, it is an act of incarnational divine love as we are told in the hymn love so amazing so divine demands our soul our life our all unlike some modern day prophets and evangelists who use calamities to win converts bringing fear in today's gospel our Lord uses what we assume were two well-known calamities, one of state-sanctioned terror, the other of a random accident, not for fear-mongering, but to highlight how precarious life can be. As some say, here today, gone tomorrow. Further, he underscores our Lord does in today's gospel, that we must not equate tragedy with divine punishment. Sin does not make atrocities occur in our life. They occur because of the very nature of life and living in what is a fallen world. But the point our Lord is trying to make to us in today's gospel is that life's fragility and uncertainty and unpredictability demands our urgent attention to our spiritual care. Our Lord says twice in this gospel, unless you repent, you will all perish like the others did. But he does not promise that the unrepentant will be struck down. His reference to death is eschatological. What he is talking about is at the end of times, the destruction of one's soul, of those who will not inherit eternal life. In Luke chapter 9, verse 24, we are told, those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it goes on in Luke chapter 17, 33. Those who try to make their life secure will lose it, but those who lose their life will keep it. And he's not talking about a paradox of dying and rising again in this life. He is talking about those who will inherit 
the promise of eternal life by living the faith that they proclaim. Life's fragility demands urgent attention to the care of our eternal soul. As we focus on how our investments in our pensions or for the future or in real estate or in our families or in our relationships, as we give those attention, our Lord is telling us we have to attend to our eternal soul, that we must utilize the opportunities to access God's grace and mercy through our repentance. In today's gospel, we are being told just as Pilate's victims and the tower's victims didn't choose the time of their demise, there are too many who delay repentance too long and as a consequence lose the offer, the gift of eternal life through our belief, our following of Christ. In 2 Corinthians Verse, chapter 6, verse 3, St. Paul tells us, See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of judgment. We must use this moment as the beginning of our eternal journey, not to presume that we have time to do it tomorrow or next week or next month or at some time which is convenient to us. There's a general misconception that repentance is about some form of piety or expression of regret. That notion that we see in Jeremiah or in Esther or that we read about in Jonah about the wearing of sackcloth and ashes. But in fact, through our faith journey, Repentance is something that moves away from suffering and arcs towards joy. Our act of repentance is in a sense bringing us back home to being one with God. As we are told in Psalms chapter 16 verse 11, you show me the path of life in your presence there is fullness of joy. Very often, people try to do repentance as if repentance is a thing. Something, well, to show that I'm penitent, I will read the Bible more, or I will go to church more, or I will do more good works, or I will pray more or refrain from swearing or singing louder, which clearly can't apply to me. Or otherwise, try to seek forgiveness as if it is to be negotiated with God. How many times have you heard Christians say, I'm seeking God? Or how many times have you heard people say, well, they haven't, I'm trying to search for God and I can't find him. But the reality is, as we know, God is not elusive. God doesn't play hide and seek with us. So the notion of people searching for God is nonsensical because it's not God who is hidden. It is often us who are on the run from him. In the Garden of Eden, when sin enters the world, remember who was hiding. It was not God, but humanity. As Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1 tells us, the wicked flee when no one pursues. Our Lord came into the world not to hide from us, but to seek and to save all lost souls. God is there. And if we turn to him with our open hearts and our souls and our minds and put our all in it, we will most certainly encounter him in our lives. 
But when it comes to a repentance, again, others misguidingly presume that all is well with them because they compare themselves to others. And they say, well, look at so-and-so down the road. I know that I am not as bad as they are. But we are reminded of the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector in Luke chapter 18. And we are told in that, everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. But we are told, ultimately, the only one we should seek to compare ourselves to is not to one another, but to our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the pioneer of our faith. So repentance is not something we do. To repent is to come to one's senses. It's not so much what you do as something that happens to you. True repentance is less about saying, I am sorry, and more about saying, wow. Wow to what God has in store because you have chosen a future which is to follow the path that he has set for each of us rather than those things that we desire or ascribe to or aspire to on our own. To repent is not to an action, but it is, well, it is not something we do, but a transformation of our life, of turning towards the future with faith, hope, and love. The parable of the fig tree is the call to turn towards God and to change our minds and our hearts. And the, 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 the demand of the fig tree is what is the demand for us. We must bear fruit. Many people will not know of a fig tree here. As was in the bulletin, it's a superfood. It has figs, small figs, have great nutritional value. But the thing about those trees, and if we think about where we live in Florida, it would be akin to those who have a mango tree or a coconut palm in their yard. But the thing about Jerusalem, unlike Florida, where once you go down a few feet, you run into water, there's no water. It's very arid around where our Lord is. So when you plant a tree, this tree will draw through its root system all of the moisture that's in the soil. soil. So the owner of the vineyard recognizes that this fig tree, if it does not produce, it is actually taking away from the vines. And this is also important for us to realize that if we are not bearing fruit, we can be having an adverse impact on the vines on the branches, on us, the body of Christ. By our inaction, we are actually having an impact on others. We may be constraining others from moving forward because as they look, as we look from one to the other, we get comfortable in our complacency. Nobody's doing anything, so doing nothing is good enough. That is a delusion. We get caught up in the words and the sentiment and the emotion. But ultimately, our Lord is saying repentance is a sign that there is a new direction that we choose to take in our life. And the outcome is action-oriented, bearing fruit, doing some new things in our life due to a new faith we have for living. In Psalm 103 verse 8, we're told, God is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abiding, abounding in steadfast love. And we know that 1 John chapter 4 verse 16, that the God of love 
created us, as we are told in Genesis, in his image, ultimately to be a loving people. And his expectation of each and every one of us is that we bear fruits of love. Fruits of love for him, fruits of love for our neighbor, fruits of love ultimately for ourselves. And our faith journey is that simple. It is that simple. God is love and he calls us to live in love. And this is why when we selfishly ask for things from him for our own benefit, exam advancement, comfort, or ease, that is why God may seem far away. Because we are looking for God in the wrong spaces or we are trying to connect with the wrong gods out there. We are looking for the gods of this world rather than the God who secures and provides eternal life. When we are caught up in our world and our lives and our needs, we cannot recognize the one true God who seeks to lead us to eternality. As individuals, we are called to live the gospel of love, to do actions of generosity and compassion, service, peacemaking, justice, witnessing, respecting others. These are the fruits of a life turned to God. These are the fruits of a mind and a heart which has been transformed by the Holy Spirit. But similarly, as communities of faith, we, the body of Christ, this parish of St. James, is called to bear fruit as well. If a congregation is merely existing, holding on to nostalgia of a past era, unable or unwilling to invest energy, creativity, and passion in sharing the good news of Christ, then what makes it any different to a social club? Reflect on that. If we are not living the gospel that we proclaim, what truly makes us members of the body of Christ? Just as fruit grows outward of the plant towards the light, so too does a healthy church grow outward while remaining, retaining its deep rootedness in Christ. A congregation that is inwardly focused stunts its own growth. It does not bloom. It does not flourish. Today's message is a sobering one for us, especially as we continue in our Lenten journey. The message to all of us is unless you turn to God and bear fruit, you are going to lose the chance of eternal life. And today's gospel ends on a cliffhanger we don't know what happens. Will this second chance be rewarded? Will fruit emerge to thwart the act? We don't know. But more importantly, you need to ask yourself, how is your story going to end? Will you use this land and this day and this opportunity to dig around the roots of your life? and prune yourself so that you bear the fruit of Christ. Our Lord tells us we cannot presume that we have time put down. And one last thing. If you're wondering, as happens in the gospel, where the manure comes from, remember those wise words. And I have to use it delicately. Crap happens. And so, 
Let your failures and your hurts, all the crap of your past, become the compost for the future that Christ is calling each and every one of us to. We are called to bear fruit, for if we don't, we may be cut down. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith in our triune God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare to offer up the prayers of the people, let us focus our hearts and our minds on God's call to repentance. Let us pray. The prayers of the people can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 383. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, our Anglican community, the Anglican Church of Mexico, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Peter, our bishop, Lee, our rural dean, Guy and Mario, our priest, and for all the clergy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joe, our president, Ron, our governor, Josh, our mayor, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the county of Broward, the city of Hollywood, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for social barriers which divide to crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, 
that our divisions are healed and we live in justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, especially those on our parish prayer list. Mary Rodriguez, Stan Allen Jr., Sarah Allen, Nicholas and Jonathan Saunders, Heather and Ed Reed, Riley Rupert Richendoller, Nicole Goodwin, Pat Miller, Stephanie and Jackson Gomez, Theodora Jurican, Jackie and James Lowe, Zola Barath, Maud Fernander, Jan Pushkar, Rudy Ford, Varen Anderson, Thelma Camacho, Veronica Joyce, Karen Bacchus, Ben Martinez, Donna Tolbert, Paul Crosta, Marjorie Jackson, David Andrew, Beverly Shin, Bob Whitehead, and Loretta Stewart, Junie Priscilla Barton, Michael Fowler, Rosemary Saunders, Marie Henderson Williams, Michael Marcello Risi, Trevor James, and Alan Curtin, Tyler Huate, Kirk Evans. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those celebrating birthdays, Arthur Bellotti, and for anyone or anything which you care to mention, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the clients of the Jubilee Center, the people of Madagascar, particularly the women and children for peace in the Ukraine, the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, for the repose of the soul of Elizabeth Betty Ingram, grandmother of Phil Yannon, and for Phil, Sean, Joseph, and Jack, and their entire family for the repose of the soul of William Laban, son of Howard and Mary Laban, formerly of this parish, and for his family, including his siblings, Howard Jr., Mary, and John, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, and for all those dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord in the communion, communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. James, and all of the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, 
Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, as our act of penitence, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We pray together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you of all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in life eternal. Amen. Please stand for the greeting of the peace. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share God's peace. Please be seated. Before we go into our offertory, I just wanted to go through a few notices um, to anyone who may be joining us here or online as visitors. I hope you've enjoyed our service. Is there anyone here who is celebrating a birthday or anniversary this week who is with us or any special event they would like to share? If not, I hope, as I said, you all had to, so far a wonderful weekend and the blessed week ahead. Just some of the notices for Lent that there are midweek services will continue on Wednesdays at noon. We will have stations of the cross on Fridays, both in person and via Zoom, you, and you're invited to join us on either one. We are preparing for Easter. We are looking for donations for the Easter lilies, and there are small um, cards at the back of the church if you are interested, and a reminder that we have our Lenten Bible study, which continues on Thursdays via Zoom at 7 p.m. While we are going into the offertory, you, we will have um, some donations that have been brought that are being brought forward to be blessed and these are for the jubilee center as you have known we were collecting for the jubilee center and they were very thankful for what we had raised during advent as gifts to those who are less fortunate in our community but i'm also thankful that there have been a couple of people who have judiciously continued to bring stuff in always remembering the less fortunate in them, and for them and for the gifts, we will give thanks. Our, our offertory hymn is This Is The Day, and I'll... In, sorry. Yes, pardon? Oh, yes, please, please, yes. If you, if you stand, yeah. Heavenly Father, I ask you to journey with those 
who will journey from us in this week. Give them the, the presence of your spirit with them, the assurance that wherever they go, that you are remain with them and they remain connected to us and ultimately bring them safely back to those that they love. We ask this through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Travel safe.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fulfillment of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was taken over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my body, blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrament of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive these sacraments and serve you 
in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin, St. James, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Yes, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. <laughs> Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let's now give God thanks for this foretaste of the heavenly banquet by praying together the post-communion prayer on page 366. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of your most precious body and blood, of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please bow your heads to receive God's blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Our recessional hymn is How Great Thou Art. Please stand. Oh Lord my God, when I
sisters and brothers in Christ, our service has ended. Let us bless the Lord.